I have to say this because it was also the best time I had weed was the last time I smoked weed when I quit because people know I'm all sober and everything like that is I smoked my brother with Snoop Doggy Snoop Doggy Dog. First of all, Dog dog is probably, Snoop is probably the coolest brother I know, period. Hands down. He's sincere about that. No matter who he's talking to, young or old, he's always honest and he looks right in your face and talks to you, right? So I was with him over um, Don Juan's house. Don Juan's house and me and Snoop Dogg. So they smoking blunt. Snoop, Snoop could, blunt, could smoke nonstop. He ain't gonna never fall down. You are not gonna outsmoke Snoop. So he pulled his bag out and he's got jars in the bag of blunts that's already rolled. So he gonna hit the joint, joint maybe four, five times, then he pass it. You think that one blunt is coming. By the time you pass it, the next blunt is on its way. You know, so he smoke you on it. So you can actually see it if you go online, cause I did this record and I needed him to promote it for me. So he got right online, got right in the, in the lens, hit his blunt and blew the smoke to tell people about my new my new record called Michael Kaya's Greatest Hits and the Great Unknowns. If you go online and put in Snoop Dogg, Michael Kaya, that thing gonna come up, man. And But I was so smoked out, I didn't even wanna smoke no weed no more. I was like, I'm good. That's, that'll hold me right there for life. Tupac was so fucking cool. You know, that's it. That he's another perfect example how people take a story and fuck the story up and embellish it. So they want to make him the bad guy and the heavy. He was never a bad guy. He was never heavy. And he was way fucking smart. He was a little genius. And what he used to do, like, I don't know if you know Venice Beach, California. So he would come to Venice Beach sometime and get the comics to, to Jones on each other, talk about each other. Now, he wouldn't do that with you. He wouldn't go back and forth with you, but he'd get one comic to get on another comic, so they'd be going back and forth. He used to hang out at the comedy store, too, and he was like everybody's little brother, man. Everybody who knew him wanted to adopt him because he was cool as shit with a huge fucking brain. His brain was out of this world. He was logical and thorough. I think that's his mama. His mama was just such a genius and she really understood our society and how people really treat black people and how we have to stand up like kings if we ever want to be treated like kings and she made sure he knew that from being very young and it just flowed out of him i remember for a couple of years ucla had a course just called the poetry of tupac shakur he's just that bad so i really dug him you know he was just really just really a great guy because i met him and snoop when they were both really just starting. Because, you know, I got to California, because, you know, originally from Chicago, Projects, Robert Taylor Home, 4352 South State, Part 909. But I got to uh, California in 86. And that's just when Dre and Snoop Dogg and all of them was just starting. In fact, Dr. Dre and Eazy E came to my wedding in 88, you know? So I used to hang with them because everybody came to Venice Beach. Everybody. So they would see me, I befriended them, they befriended me, and we was just cool, man. But no, Tupac was the truth. You know, I never saw Pac and Easy together. I saw Easy with Dre. I, I never really hung with him, hung with him, but he came to the he came to the mansion for the wedding. Dre is who I really knew. My memories of Dr. Dre are still, first of all, he's still cool as shit uh, to me. He's always been cool. And I try to get him to give me some money to do my album, my first comedy album. And then I did it on my own. So it was funny, but you could tell it when, you know, it wasn't what they call where they edited and shot it, what they call it, when they clean the album up so it's all fresh and shit. And I gave him a copy of it. He didn't come across the motherfucker. He still didn't give me my money yet. But I still dream of doing some work with him. Uh, I would, anytime I see him, he always stops what he's doing and give me my respect and my love. That's all I can really say about him. I, I dig Dre, you know, Dre is, is cool.